and welcome back to another episode of the Employee to Boss podcast. I'm your host, Haley Hayhurst, the owner of Espresso Podcast Production, a full-service podcasting agency specializing in editing, marketing, and strategy. And I am really focused on helping more people start their podcast in 2024. So if you're on the fence, come and connect with me on Instagram, and I am sure you'll realize a podcast is right for you and it's the marketing strategy that you need going into 2024. Today I have a really fun episode with Stephanie Ritz. She is a business coach and world traveler. So if you've ever thought that the no bad life sounds fun and you want to go after it, be sure to listen to this episode because Stephanie is the most inspirational person to listen to when it comes to this. So after spending 15 years in corporate and after a rough relationship transition and a canceled bucket list trip due to 2020, she decided she wanted more out of life, both personally and professionally, and that is where her journey started. So today she is traveling around the world with her business that she loves and is able to bring her clients along with her. So she and I talk about creating that corporate exit strategy. Now for her, this took two years and this is what she specializes in really helping other people exit their corporate role, feel confident about it and be sure that their business is going to succeed. So with her business, after she left corporate, she is now living the nomadic life. She's staying in Airbnbs, hotels. She is doing her meetings all around the world, and she even brings some of her clients with her on some of her VIP days. They can go and travel with her for a day, a whole day of coaching, a whole day of travel, and it that just sounds like a business dream for anyone who wants to get out there and see the world more. You know, in corporate, you might feel very trapped with your very limited PTO here in America. And I think that this episode really challenges that. So if this is something you've ever been curious about, or just want some more freedom in your business and leave your corporate role altogether, Stephanie is the one to go to. In the show notes, I have a case study from her about her journey leaving corporate and going full time into the nomadic life, as well as Instagram, her website, and her Facebook group. If you have any questions about this, please contact either myself or Stephanie. We would both love to chat with you. And let's get right into this episode with Stephanie Ritz. Hey, Stephanie, thank you so much for joining me on the Employee to Boss podcast. I'm so excited to talk to you today. I am so excited to be here and share all the things with you and your listeners. Thank you so much for having me. Of course. Two of my favorite things to talk about are business and traveling. So (laughs) I really was looking forward to this conversation all week. So do you want to give us a quick summary of who you are and your journey from what you used to do being an employee to what you do now? Yes, I will try and make it brief. There's so much to say and so many nuggets to share, but we'll get to all of that. My name is Stephanie Ritz. I'm a business strategist and mindset coach and a full-time digital nomad. So I went from being an employee. My last career was as vice president of operations for an educational staffing company. Now I help corporate professionals to start and grow a coaching or consulting business alongside their nine to five so that they can hand in their notice with confidence with a profitable and sustainable business in the exact way that I did. I built my business over for two years while being in my corporate job. And during that time, I created a very specific exit strategy, which I think is just very important alongside the strategy for growth, the intentional um, process of building up your business to a place where you feel confident to say, okay, I'm ready to hand in my notice. And during that time, I also became a full-time digital nomad, so I didn't wait to quit my job, which I think is just a really important part of the discussion on how to get what you want, which is the mindset and the willingness to step into the life and role that you want before you have it. So we can dive into all of those things, but that is the short version of what I'm doing now and and kind of what it looked like before I became a full-time entrepreneur. There's so many different ways I want to take this conversation, so I'm excited to see where we go with it. 
But I see an overarching theme of this just being balance, like being able to balance your nine to five while building a business and then also being able to run that business while you're traveling full time. And I think balance in business is difficult to find, especially in the beginning where, you know, so many people start and become entrepreneurs because they want that time freedom. But I'm sure you've seen that meme where it's like, I didn't want to work nine to five. So now I work 24 seven. I just think that's yep. too real. <laughs> It can be very real. Yes. Especially I think when you start to like really love what you do, because I mean, I didn't hate my corporate job, but I didn't love it either. And when I found this, you know, coaching and consulting business that I have, I fell in love with it. Like I absolutely love serving my clients. And I think you get that feeling when you realize you're in your zone of genius and then it can actually be hard to stop working and be intentional with your time even when you're in your nine to five and building your business, that desire to like work, work, work is there because you love it and you're, you're excited. And then all of a sudden like burnout hits and you're exhausted and you're like, oh gosh, I actually have to build a business. I can't just actually show up and do what I love to do. And I think that's where people come into a little bit of a challenge when they're starting and growing their business. Absolutely. So let's start off by talking about your journey with running your business and also being in your corporate job. I know a lot of people just can't jump into entrepreneurship for money reasons, for confidence reasons, all of that. And so a lot of people do dream of start like building up a business that can sustain them and then leaving their job. And it sounds like you work with them to kind of build out that plan. But for yourself, what did that look like in action? Yeah. So for me, when I started my business, it was right after, oh no, during COVID and the beginning stages of COVID is when I started my business. And so it was a really weird time of year. I was obviously working full time and I started my business because my son left. I am a single mom to a very young adult son. And so he had left for college just a few months before. And I thought, this is my time. This is my season of life to be able to do things that I always dreamt of doing. And then COVID hit and he came back. So here I am supporting him again, trying to figure out his next life steps. Plus I traveled for my corporate job. My territory was New England, which for those of you who aren't familiar is like across six different states. So I was traveling for work, trying to figure out how to support my son through this weird time of, of lockdown and, and starting a business. So I think giving myself permission to be in a season of hustle was the first thing I just had to reconcile because I think we'll hear a lot in the online space of like the six hour work week. And like you said, like wanting to start a business so that you didn't have to be working all the time. But the reality is growing a business takes time, energy, effort, money. There's a lot of investment that goes into it. So reconciling the fact that, listen, I'm going to be working 40 hours a week, supporting my son, which takes mental time, energy, all of those things, trying to look after myself during all of this while I'm traveling and doing it all and building my business. That that, that wasn't going to happen with without some mental shifts on how I'm going to approach this. I think the other thing is, you know, this was my second business. I started a business in my twenties, which is a whole nother story and a different season of life and talk about hustle. My gosh, I learned so much from that process that I saw very quickly in the online space, how time consuming it can be to be in all these groups where you're constantly learning, getting advice, you know, hearing all these, are, I got to consume all the podcasts, list all the YouTube videos, like, you know, do all the things to make sure that I can do this successfully. But none of those things were supporting me to actually get clients. Like maybe the knowledge, the knowledge is helpful and supportive, but you need to take action. And I think that's where a lot of entrepreneurs get tripped up is in the learning and not the doing. And so for me, kind of having such limited time to work on my business, I got very strategic with bringing on support and making sure that I was spending my limited time on business building activities and not just consuming for the sake of learning, but learning and implementing 
and really measuring what's working. So I was spending my time really specifically. And that was a game changer. And I think for those who have limited time, being realistic with what time you have and how you're spending that time is the very first step in making sure that you're building a business and not just thinking about the idea of having a business. Yeah, definitely. I know. So I started my business also during COVID in 2020, and it was because I was laid off. So I was unemployed. So starting a business was not, it wasn't easy, of course, but it wasn't anything where I had to leave a solid income already. And so that's definitely a part where a lot of people that are looking to get into business now probably do have jobs and are looking to, you know, transition out of them. So when you were doing that as well, did you set like goals for yourself to reach and then you knew it was time to leave? Or were you like, this day in this year, I'm done? Obviously, I had a goal. I think goals are important. But more important than the goal was an exit strategy where I created very specific benchmarks for myself that included how much I wanted to have in savings as a buffer because I'm a single mom. And even though my son is technically an adult, he's still very young and counts on me financially for support. So also because I'm single, I don't have a spouse or partner to rely on for benefits or 401k or all of the other things that my job provided me with. So I didn't want to let any of those things go to the wayside. So I created a financial plan for savings, for replacing healthcare, for making sure that I was still going to be able to contribute to a retirement fund. And I, I knew exactly how much of a buffer I wanted to have for myself before leaving. I also had goals for my business. Like, what does it look like for me to have a profitable and sustainable business? Because revenue does not equal profit. So I wanted to make sure I was in a place where I was getting consistent profit. And I had some clients that I knew were either going to stick with me or a process for continually being able to get clients so that I didn't feel like I was rushing into it just so that I could say that I left my job, but I felt really prepared. And when that day came that I handed in my notice, I wasn't scared. I was anxious and excited, but I wasn't scared because I had hit all of those benchmarks and I knew I wasn't going to leave before I had done all of those things. So I felt really ready. And I think that that's important. And I want people to know, like, even as a business coach, it took me two years to finally get to that place. And so it doesn't have to be three months or six months. And the limitations that I think we put on ourselves as high achieving career people to say, okay, well, I'll give it six months and we'll see if it's successful or not, or I'll give it a year. And putting those timelines and those constraints on ourselves is exactly what sabotages us from being successful. I was of the mindset of, it doesn't matter how long it takes. I know that I'm going to get there. Like, this is happening. This is the business that I want. This is the life that I want. I can't have the lifestyle that I desire in my corporate job. I don't have the fulfillment that I desire in my corporate job. So... This isn't a matter of like, I need to make this happen by X date. It's a matter of, I'm going to do it until I'm there. And that's that's really what pushed me, I think, to check all those boxes on my exit strategy so that I could leave with confidence. No, that's so amazing that you were able to do this all on your own and just take the time that you needed and set those goals. And I think that's really the story that a lot of people need to hear to see that it is possible. And that's great that you're helping your clients now with that as well, that you've been through it. You were your first client and now you can help others do the same. I think that's really amazing. Thank you. I think another really important thing to point out that I did during this process, because I was traveling. There, there's two things, really. I was traveling for work while doing all of these things. So even creating a schedule to meet with clients, to have discovery calls, it was challenging. So I had to put boundaries in place around my corporate job. And for some people, that's really tough, especially like I was at a higher level. So there's kind of this expectation, I think, especially in America, like you're never off the clock. Like I was sleeping with my work phone and I was like, you know, I am paid for the time that I give to this company, you know, I, I'm always going to give for more than 40 hours, but I can set specific boundaries to say at this time I'm done. 
So I had to, con- I had that conversation with my team. You know, I, I had to really set those boundaries, even with clients who are calling me after hours and say, you know, this is going to wait till tomorrow. It's not life or death. It's going to wait till tomorrow so that I can schedule this time to work on my business. And I did that. And that was really important. And the other thing is I was absolutely dead set on a travel life. I didn't know that the direction I was going to go when I started my business. But once I made the decision that after my son was settled, which was another thing on my exit strategy list, once he was moved into his own place and settled again, I was going to travel internationally. That's what I want for my life. I've waited a long time to get to this place. And so I asked my boss if I could work remotely after we were kind of coming out of COVID. And he said, no. And I didn't let that define how I was going to move forward. I couldn't relocate the way that I wanted to. However, I still became a digital nomad during that time. And I started living in hotels and Airbnbs all over New England while I was waiting to transition out of corporate. So doing the things that make you feel like you already live the life that you want is a really powerful way to create the life that you want. And that was two really important things I think everyone can implement during this season of hustle is number one, really clear boundaries around your work schedule and your business schedule. And then also like, how can you start living the life that you want before you have it so that you can create it? Mm, Absolutely. Thank you for outlining those for us. Because that leads me to the next part of this, which is all about travel. So I love traveling. Every year I like to take an international trip. And I really never did that when I was like in school or, you know, before I started my business. And so finding that balance of getting all my client work done so I can have a vacation is a lot sometimes. (laughs) And sometimes it'll be like, a lot of like working so many hours before my trip just so I can have some days off. And it's something I'm willing to do because that's important to me. But with you, you are, you know, working while you're living abroad. How do you find that balance of travel, adventure, freedom, while still having these clients to tend to and your own business to tend to? I mean, that's, that's a lot. (laughs) It is a lot, but you know, we were saying earlier, like when you love what you do, it's sort of easy to make those necessary adjustments. So for me, obviously I have clients everywhere. And when I'm traveling, I could be in any time zone. You never really know. So I I do plan out my travels months in advance and I create my calendar for availability for work months in advance as well. And so sometimes that means working until one o'clock in the morning and then sleeping until 10 or 11 the next day, which is awesome for me. And sometimes it means getting up really early to meet with clients and then going to bed early. And it just depends on where I'm at in the world. But the cool thing is like when you're your own boss, you don't have to worry about getting up the next day and being in a meeting that you hadn't planned for. So I'm very intentional with my schedule. I make sure that I have days off like Fridays for me are like, I I'm never going to plan anything on my, on a Friday. I will always have that day to do whatever it is that I want to do. Veg out and watch Netflix all day, go explore a city, take a tour, do something new and exciting. And so I do tend to stay in places for a full month so that I can adjust to the time zone, so that I have enough time to support my business and enjoy travel and not feel like a tourist where you're cramming it all in into one week because that's all the vacation time that you have. And so that has been a great sort of system and process for me for finding work-life balance. But yeah, I'm very, I stick to my schedule. I plan it out in advance. This is the times where I do my lives. I do a podcast or YouTube interviews. I support my clients. I do my own content creation. And I'm very sort of, I guess, disciplined because I know on the other side of those work hours is a fabulous city outside of my door (laughs) that I get to enjoy and explore and experience. And it's amazing. So pre-planning, really sticking to my my schedule and planning out like exactly where I'm going to be in advance helps me to create a schedule that works for both me and my clients. 
Yeah. Do you, you mentioned you stay in Airbnbs and hotels. Do you ever stay in hostels or anything like that? I don't. I think one of the really important things about having a travel lifestyle is traveling in a way that's going to make it feel good for you. Mm -hmm. And so that was a big part of my planning too. I could have left my corporate job a lot sooner and did a much more budget friendly or budget conscious travel experience, but that's not how I would have most enjoyed it. I'm a bit bougie with my travel, I guess you could say. <laughs> so I I, yeah, I, I do. I I planned my life around the way that I want to experience it in a reasonable way. Like, you know, yeah, I'd love to maybe like go on a yacht tour every other day, but that's not going to happen. So I have found like a reasonable balance of how will I feel happy traveling? How will I really be able to experience it in a way that aligns for me and my lifestyle and the way that I want to experience it while also like being budget conscious and, and being aware of how much my spending is every month on, on my life expenses and my business expenses that feels comfortable for me. And I'm sure a lot of your clients come to you because they really resonate with the lifestyle that you live and they want that lifestyle too. So I was looking at your Instagram and love the travel photos, but also just the business posts that you make and how you really combine it all into your brand. Yeah. I mean, the travel lifestyle is a part of who I am now as a human. So I have actually incorporated that into my business and I offer business travel intensives so that people can travel with me, have a one-on-one -on -one coaching experience, get out of their home office and get all the inspiration that I get from travel. And again, kind of stepping into the life that you want before you have it. This is how you do that. Like if a life of travel is what you want, then invest in your business with a travel intensive, have a luxury experience, step into that role as like a badass six figure CEO, you know, staying in a posh hotel, having incredible meals, have a luxury experience. This is how you get the motivation and the energy. Like, you know, those people who are like, I've always wanted to fly first class. That's a goal for me. Like I want to sit at the front of the plane and be able to sleep on the plane and have champagne. If you've never actually flown first class, it's all just an idea in your head. But if you do it once, you're going to be so motivated to get that first class ticket every time, because then you have real life experience to pull from. And you realize like why there's such a difference between first class and economy. Mm -hmm. And so this is why, like I say, stepping into the life that you want before you have it is the absolute best motivation you could possibly have to create the life that you want. I love that. I read this book a while ago that was kind of how to increase your income and it was written by a man and I was like, you know, a lot of like male privilege was in it. And one of the things was something like always upgrade your seat in planes because you'll never know who you're going to meet. And I was like, how weird. I was like, what are you talking about? Anyway, I like a couple months later, I tried it. And it was so funny. I like owe this guy that I was roasting who wrote the book like an apology because <laughs> I sat next to this guy who needed help with his podcast and he hired me. Oh, I love that. Him. And so it was just like, oh my goodness. It's just so crazy that you can align yourself to these things that you want and it'll happen for you. I think the universe is always providing in like mysterious ways. And that was just one of them. So have you experienced th situations like that? I'm sure, like I mentioned, your clients come to you because they're like, yeah, this is the, this is the lifestyle that I want. And she has the balance that I want to find. Yeah. I mean, I meet people all the time. I, I don't know if that's like the universe or energy or whatever, but I actually think it's intentional about how I put myself into those situations. And I'm willing to share my story and tell mm -hmm. people I'm a full-time traveler. Like it is the easiest way to start a conversation on a group tour when you don't know anybody to say, I travel full time. People are like, what, how are you doing this? But to even go back to like your example, oftentimes clients will hire me and then all of a sudden they'll get their first client or all of a sudden something big will happen before we even have a coaching session. 
And it's because of the energetics that you're putting out there. Like you've made the decision to get support and you feel that support. Even before we have our first session, like you've made an investment in yourself. You've decided I'm going to be successful and this is what I need to make it happen. And just by doing that alone, there's an energetic pull that comes into your business that create results. And so this is not just like a one time, like this happens all the time with clients. And it's not to say like the second you hire someone for support, all these wonderful things are going to happen. But when you shift your mindset and you see things differently, or you feel that support, it does put you in a place where you're showing up differently. You're making different decisions. You're taking different actions. It's funny. I joke with my clients all the time because they they know like when there's work to be done in between sessions, if they know that their coaching call is coming up and they haven't done it, they're like, oh crap, she's going to call me on it. I got to go do the things. And taking that action is what creates the results. So even just kind of the looming accountability is is the thing that really supports people sometimes in their business. So I love that you did the upgrade and that that happened for you because it really does. It wasn't the upgrade. It was just that the idea of you putting yourself into a place where you're like, people can hire me. I'm in first class. I can tell them what I do and have powerful conversations. And it really does make a difference. Yeah, absolutely. And there's so many, you know, you are a mindset coach and you work with a lot of NLP in your practice, correct? I do. Mm -hmm. So there's a lot of things that you had to overcome with mindset, I'm sure, from back to when you were an employee to working both your employee job and starting your business and then like going all in on travel and even tra- like I'm quite extroverted so I can go into any situation but I know for a lot of people like solo travel is terrifying going to new places and not knowing anyone is scary and these are all mindset things that you just have to work on so what are like your best mindset tips for entrepreneurs I know that's a big question <laughs> That is a big question. I mean, I think starting with clarity on why it is that you want to do whatever it is that you want to do, because it really comes back to like, is it really important enough for you to take the action? Because if it feels like something that's a nice to have versus like, this is what I want my life to be, like you making that firm decision, like this is a direction for my business. This is the direction of my life. And this is why that's really, really powerful. So even though you've probably all heard this a million times to start with why, and that's a great book to read too by Simon Sinek, it really does make an impact on your actions because how you think about what it is that you want has a direct impact on the actions that you take. So connecting yourself to like the feeling of travel and the desire and and having that lifestyle, how does that make you feel? And are you really willing to put in the work to do it? So start start with clarity on, is it really important enough for you to take the scary action? And then remembering also, and this is a, where like NLP and mindset work really comes in is you've done hard things in your life before. This isn't the first time you've done something scary or hard or challenging and remembering like your power in taking that action and making that decision and really thinking through, like, if I fail, if I get it wrong, if I screw up my visa, if I end up in the wrong city, like, what is the absolute worst case scenario here? Like, do you have resources? Are you able to get support, get help? Do you have people, knowledge, information that's going to support you to figure it out if something goes wrong? And the answer is generally yes, but the fear can become so big that we never take the action. So get really clear on, is it really important to you? Really break down like, what is the worst case scenario here if things go wrong, if things go awry? And then like, what is your plan of action? So strategy, implementation, and mindset is my framework that I use in business, but it works in life too. Like, what is the strategy? How am I going to implement it? And how do I need to think about this in order to take the action to make it happen? And fear can really be reduced down when you think about what is the worst case scenario and am I, am I capable of overcoming it if the worst were to happen? And if I don't do it because the fear is so big, 
how is that going to make me feel about my life or my business or the situation that I'm in? Is it worth taking the risk of trying or is it better to stay complacent with where I'm at? Yeah. Yeah. Cause you never want those things to eat you alive where you're like, I'm too scared to do this, but what if, what if I did this? What if I just took that step? So that's great advice. Thank you so much for sharing that. You're welcome. Another thing that I saw on your Instagram, you had this post with like the most beautiful sunset I've ever seen. And it just says a six figure business requires six figure energy. And I know we just talked about energy work and I'm curious what a six figure energy means to you. Oh, that's such a great question. It's so much less about the actual money, more so about the mindset of having the business and life that you want, because, you know, if you can have the lifestyle that you want and make $50,000, then that's your six figure energy that that's your goal, right? Maybe six figure energy is a starting place for you to get to a million dollars in your business and build this massive empire. So it's less about the money and more so about, you know, the mindset of stepping into the life that you want. And I think six figures is just a kind of an easy round number that most people can associate with being successful or not, especially kind of coming out of the corporate world. I think six figures is like a benchmark, like, you know, how close am I to that? Or, you know, how much further am I going to get from there once I've hit it? So six figure energy for me is happiness, living, living the business and life balance that you desire, um, which is never going to be 50, 50, but really enjoying whatever it is that you are doing with intention and embodying the business and life that you want, not just dreaming about it, but calling that energy in by taking action, like upgrading your seat on the plane or investing in that podcast manager so that you can spend more time doing other things. Or if you're, listen, it's not always just about money either. Maybe it's like, okay, I'm spending intentional time meditating for 15 minutes. I never gave myself that time in my nine to five grind. I'm going to do that as a business owner because that's what my body and life needs in order for me to reset and focus and be successful in my business. Maybe that's your six figure energy. So it's gonna, I think it looks different for everyone, but for me, it's sustaining a business that I love and having a, a travel lifestyle that still fulfills me. And so that's why I don't stay in hostels. That's why I'm very intentional with my planning on the locations that I choose and the tours that I choose to do. And how I spend my time while I'm traveling, spending money on the things that matter most to me, which is going to always be that seat in the front of the plane, but maybe not necessarily new outfits every time I go to a new location or spending money on that Louis Vuitton bag just because I happen to be in Paris. So yeah, it's it's really about happiness, joy, fulfillment, and calling in that energy to live the life in a way that feels aligned for you. That's amazing. I really like that mindset, how it has nothing to do with a money goal. I mean, it does, but it doesn't have to be six figures. It's whatever that means to you. I really like that mindset. That's great. Thank you. So I'm curious, at what point do people come and work with you and who do you work with? So this is what I kind of love about what I do is I get to start from inception with most of my clients. Most of my clients are in a nine to five. They're trying to figure out what they want to do with their business idea. How do I make this work alongside my busy life? So those are generally the clients that I work with. I help them start and grow their business. Some of my clients have already left their nine to five and are realizing that it's more challenging than they realize to be on the entrepreneurial roller coaster on their own where they've started a business, they've gotten it off the ground and it's just not going anywhere. Like they're just throwing spaghetti at the wall and hoping that some sort of marketing plan sticks to actually grow their business. So my clients are all coaches, consultants, or online service professionals. That is specifically the niche that I work with to help them start and grow their business. And I help clients from inception to scaling to that six figure or multi six figure range. And I love working with clients who 
or in those beginning stages of figuring it out because I get to build out that foundation from the beginning really powerfully. So it's it's less sort of like figuring out why it didn't work and creating something intentional from the beginning and helping them grow and helping them leave the nine to five for good. Some people end up going back and there's certainly nothing wrong with that. But if that is the goal for you, that's what gets me jazzed, like keeping you in a sustainable and profitable business that you love. What offers do you have? So I work exclusively one-on-one because I truly feel that's where we can make the most powerful impact. Nothing wrong with group programs, but I just feel... One-on-one allows for really deep and impactful movement in your business because mindset is such a huge part of it. The money is in the mindset and that deep level of mindset support is often the missing piece in group programs. So I work one-on-one with clients in either a two-hour intensive, if there's just one specific thing that you need support with to move the needle on in your business, a six-month VIP program where we work together across six months one-on-one, and I am literally in your business with you, holding your hand through each step of the process of starting and growing, Um, or as I shared, Plane Ride to Profits, which is a travel intensive, which is just like the absolute best excuse for a business investment if I've ever heard one, right? (laughs) Absolutely. Yeah. So we can, you can travel with me, have a one-on-one business coaching experience, get away from home, have a luxury experience, step into the life that you want and make massive money moves. It's like months of coaching in, in one weekend because we're together in person for a full day of coaching and then another full day of having just a luxury, incredible experience. Oh my gosh. How fun. How that's probably so freeing for your clients to see like it happen in real life. Cause I think it's one thing to think about living the nomadic life and then actually living it. So that's an amazing offer that you have. It's literally one of my favorite things to do to get out from behind the screen and to actually like see them and work with them one-on-one. Plus like there's no like top of the hour, like, Oh, our, our zoom is over now. Right. Um, Go I'm going to go thing. to this cool city that's <laughs> I'm in right now and you can go back to your desk. Like. Exactly. Like, let's go out. Let's go have a drink. Let's go have dinner and let's keep the conversation going. And that that is really where like the 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 massive mindset shifts happen, too, because all this time together, like three days together, there's no way there's not going to be a mindset breakthrough or shift that just naturally happens because we're together having conversations about your business and making moves together in real time. So I just love them. I love these plane ride to profits intensives, but one-on-one client work is is really where it's at for me with business coaching. There's nothing that's going to be more powerful to really make money moves in your business. That's awesome. And thanks for sharing those with us. I'm curious, what are your favorite places that you've traveled to? Oh, everybody asked me this. It's (laughs) so hard to say. I have got, I've been to so many places around the world. It really is tough. I guess some of my, my favorites, I've been to Florence twice, Florence, Italy. So I think that that's saying something, the fact that I've gone back and I'm going back to Ireland next year as well, because I loved, loved my time in Ireland. And Australia. I mean, I I went to four different cities in Australia. When I go back next year, I'm going to two new cities that I haven't been to yet. And back to Perth, which I think is just one of the most underrated cities in the world because nobody goes to Perth when they go to Australia. They go to Sydney or Melbourne. But I absolutely loved Perth and I'm excited to go back there as well. But honestly, you know, having this travel life and never having traveled when I was younger every place that I go to, it's like being a kid going to Disney World, like experiencing it for the first time. It's new food, it's new cultures, new people, new things that these eyes have never seen in real life. And it it, it amazes me. I'm truly in awe of everywhere that I've been. It's all a unique adventure and I just love it. Yeah, absolutely. I love that. I've done quite a bit of traveling. I'm just, I'm lucky and I think that more people should travel because I think it opens your eyes up to other cultures and lifestyles. And I think it gives you more empathy for just people in day-to-day life. I think that's what a lot of people just (laughs) need more of. 
It's so true. It's, it's hard to explain until you're out there in the world experiencing it. And you realize like we're, there's more things similar about us than there are different. And people generally are kind out in the world. Mm -hmm. And it, it just, yeah, it changes you as a person. And that video that you were referencing earlier with the boat, like, I mean, talk about inspiration for creativity. There's nothing like it. Like I, if you're feeling like you've got a creative block, get out of your house, get out of your home office, go, you know, somewhere where you feel like you can marvel at something and feel in awe because that is what draws inspiration. Is there anything else you want to share, Stephanie, before we get into your action steps for the week? You know, I think I think what's really important, especially because I know your listeners are at the, the beginning stages of business, is to really go at your own pace, to not put limitations on yourself, right? Like I didn't know that I'd be traveling full time. It just sort of happened through the process of growing my business. I had no idea how long it was going to take me. It could have been six months. It could have been six years, but I knew this is what I wanted. And so I think it's just really important to know, like there, there is nobody telling you, like you have to have it done by this amount of time and block out all of the the noise around like, you know, ha leave your job in six months or, oh, you're not full-time in your business. What does that mean about you being successful or not successful? None of those metrics are going to impact your life. You have to kind of own that choice. And so, especially for the singletons out there like me, just know also like you don't need a partner to do this. Like you can do this on your own, wherever you're starting from. I started my first business under extraordinary circumstances, much more challenging than the second time around, but I was very focused on what I wanted. And I think that that's just really an important thing that I want everyone to hear is that if you really, really want it, be willing to be in the season of hustle, do what you need to do and just choose every day to work toward that goal, regardless of what, whatever else is happening around you. Oh, you're so inspirational. I love this conversation. Thank you. Thank you. So Stephanie, to start wrapping up the episode, I ask every guest this, I would love it if you could challenge the audience with three action steps to take that they can move forward with their business or their mindset or anything you want them to do. What would you like to challenge them with? Yeah, I, I'm going to, I'm going to challenge you with my own framework because there's a reason I have it in place and it's the most effective way to actually have the business that you want. So starting with strategy, if you don't have a strategy that you feel is designed specifically for your strengths, that's going to meet your audience where they are, it's time to go back to the drawing board. None of the rest of it's going to matter if you don't have an impactful strategy that plays to your strengths, not what's working for everybody else, but what's really going to work for you and that's going to connect with your specific target market. So have an impactful strategy. Implementation. This is the permission giving for the season of hustle, right? Like be willing to do the work. It is work. Don't let all the, the noise out there about it's it's easy to start a business or, you know, go viral and get a 5 million followers. Like there's people with followers that are making zero money right now. Don't let that get in the way of you taking action consistently and give yourself enough time to implement for your strategy to work. 30 days is not enough. 60 days is often not enough. You really need to measure what's working and make small tweaks along the way as you implement the strategy. And then mindset. The money is in the mindset. This is something that I say almost every day at some point to clients, in lives, in interviews, whatever it is. And I think it's just the most impactful piece of all of this. If you do not believe you're going to be successful, you're not going to be successful. If you allow limiting beliefs to guide your actions, then you're going to get limited results. That self-belief is so essential, and that is not an easy thing to cultivate on your own. So surround yourself with people who are going to lift you up, who are going to remind you of not just, you know, you can do it and be a cheerleader about 
why you are going to be successful, like what you've already accomplished in your life, in your business, in your career, in your family, in your church, whatever it is, you've done things before that you've overcome and you've been successful at. And it's important to remind yourself of that or, or surround yourself with people who are going to remind you of that and be, be willing to stick with it regardless of what's happening in your business today, that does not have to define what your business is going to look like tomorrow. And that's all about the mindset. So the, the mindset support, I think, is just one of the most essential pieces to success, that you're doing it for yourself, that you're surrounding yourself with community that's going to be uplifting, and that you're getting the support to work through the limiting beliefs when they come up because nobody's immune to it. So get that support for the mindset to make sure that you can implement the strategy. That is my framework, strategy, implementation, mindset. Those are the three things I would love for you to focus on to really make big moves in your business. I love those. Those are really, really great action steps. Thank you so much for sharing. And Stephanie, where can people connect with you if they want to work with you or just learn more about you? Yeah, I think I'd love, and hopefully you can put this in the show notes. I actually have a free case study that I would love for you all to start with. I'd love to connect with all of you. Send me a DM and say hi. But this case study, it's free and it really shows you how to start and grow a business alongside your nine to five. Exactly the things that I did right, the things that I did wrong, the strategies that I employed. So I'll share the link with you. I would love for you guys to download that to see what's a realistic look at how to start and grow a business alongside yeah. your nine to five. But I'm at stephanieritz.co on Instagram, on Facebook. That's also my website. Again, it's stephanieritz.co. Co. Um, I also have a Facebook community, the Freedom Based Business Builders. It is a community specifically for coaches, consultants, and online service businesses. I do free weekly business trainings in there and actually offer an opportunity to spotlight my community members so they can learn how to promote themselves and connect with other community members and potentially even get clients just by introducing themselves inside the community. So it's a really great space for those of you who are are looking to connect with other like-minded entrepreneurs. And I'd love to invite you there as well. Awesome. Yes. I will put all of those in the show notes. And I just really want to thank you for coming on here and sharing your story and all of the action steps, because I think that the audience will really, really learn a lot from this episode. So I thank you so much for sharing all of that. Yeah, you're so welcome. Thanks so much for having me, Haley. Thank you for listening to the Employee to Boss podcast. If you made it to the end of this episode, I hope that you implement the actionable steps from this week's experts so you can get started with your business today. Please rate, review, and subscribe to the Employee to Boss podcast on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, YouTube, or wherever you listen to your podcasts. It helps more than you could ever imagine. Remember, a little progress each day leads to big results. We come out with a new episode every Tuesday. To access our show notes, transcripts, and courses, please check out EspressoPodcastProduction.com.